before, after. <laughs> Up and at him early this morning with Pete. He's a real deal permaculture designer. This is one of the sites. We're gonna dive into it, see what's up. Boom. Man, you have put a ton of mulch in here, man. Lots of mulch. Uh, mulch is definitely in Florida our key to success. Everything from retaining moisture and building soil. Um, mulch is a waste product typically. You know, so if you live in an urban area, these tree companies, so they have to pay to get rid of this stuff. So here in central Florida, oak, being that climax species, that pioneer species, that means that bacteria, that fungi is already present to break that down. So here on this site, as you can see, most of the species growing are oak, live oak. So when you get oak mulch from a tree company, it has those leaves in it, that hardwood in it. You know, it's that combination of that nitrogen carbon ratio for that breakdown. So when we go to a box store and we buy mulch, it's pure carbon. You know, so there's a, a much bigger difference here when we're getting the mulch that has that leaves in it with that ratio or getting that hardwood that's actually from this area. I mean, it's literally our key to success. It's like a sponge, you know, it's uh, retaining moisture, it's promoting mycelium growth, it's creating mushrooms. I mean, it's, you know, it's bringing the internet alive in the soil. That's what we look at the mycelium as, is that internet, you know, allowing those plants to communicate, retaining moisture, taking humidity out of the air. Tell me about the site, Pete. So we're located in North Pasco, just a few miles from Hernando County probably about two miles north of my site and about two miles west of my site. So a lot of people had commented on where is Sand Hill Farm. We're 20 miles north of Tampa. We're about 20 miles east of the Gulf of Mexico. This site is on a hill. So we're in a really hilly part of Pasco County and we have about 20 foot of south face slope. On this end, this is the far east side of the site. This is the half acre that we have done nothing with. So basically what have we got, we've done on this site, we've gone in and we've removed a lot of those invasive species. So we've taken out things like Smilax, grapevine, stinkweed, um, you know, some of the scrub oaks, and we've really thinned it out and left some of the larger oaks and made more to add lots of native plants and fruit trees in the understory. So as we kind of walk down through here, you'll see how it opens up to the, the newest section, but eventually the whole site will end up looking like this, where our goal is to put a, another clumping bamboo break in here on the far east side of the property and eventually close this space in so they have a real like botanical garden out in their backyard you know to show off to friends to come out and enjoy to watch the butterflies fly around constantly have some food in their backyard how did you begin to clear out underneath this canopy well luckily enough you know we have the proper machinery for the job okay. so between our john deere tractor and our mm. keel with the grapple um, and some some good helpers obviously some good employees that you know not only are hard workers but believe in what we're doing Yep. Um, you know, we were able to clear this site in just a few weeks. We have old site, new site. You know, this is a very interesting site. We actually put a lot of swales in on this site. This is something that I usually don't have the chance to do. And, you know, a lot of y'all have probably read about permaculture and, you know, read all these different concepts in the permaculture books. And, you know, swales something that they talk about a lot. Um, so I told the client about permaculture and swales and he said, I want them, Pete, I want them. You know, it's not something that I have a ton of experience with. We're in Florida, we're typically mm. on flat ground. Mm. So this is very experimental. Um, we put the swales in, they've been here for about six months and they haven't held water yet. Um, they've definitely stopped a lot of the erosion issues on the property. When I first came here, the clients told us that every time it would rain, this whole ditch down here, and you can see where it transitions from where we were dumping the mulch to pure sugar sand down here on the east end, all this black silt would come down off of the property so it would all erode off of the top every time it rained you know this natural forest with these leaves constantly dropping weren't even staying on the site so those swales you know that swale is supposed to stop that overland flow it's supposed to put that water into the soil profile so they weren't holding water in the swales we actually just in the last few days have filled those swales about three quarters of the way with the mulch so we've put a sponge in there for when that water actually does come. It's gonna sit in that swale for a mm. longer period of time. All right, so we're up here at the top of the site. We're about 65 feet above sea level. And just on that side of the site, it's sloping down to the north. So, you know, the ideal site for a farm in a permaculture setting would be that south face slope. So we're protected from that north wind. Typically in the winter times when those frosts come in, you know, they're coming out of that northeast. So we're on a south face slope. We've got about 15 foot of slope going down to the road. And, I'm gonna kind of walk you all in here. They have a well and we've installed a micro irrigation system. Here's one of our first swales. We just filled this one with mulch. This one has things like lychee on here, cranberry hibiscus, longan, cold hardy avocados. On both sides of the swale, we've planted either nitrogen fixing sunshine mimosa 
or perennial peanut. We found the perennial peanut the rabbits really love to eat. So it's, um, it's a tough one to get established, but it is rhizomal, so once it starts going, it's not gonna be a problem. Native Fakahatchee grass, so we grow this as a mulch. This is a source of carbon silica. We'll chop this with a large pair of scissors and drop this with our chop and drop system here in the forest. So we're basically growing our mulch. Up here along this west side, there's multiple different varieties of bamboo. He has 25 different varieties. He was really into kind of creating a collection here on the site. So even our cold hardy avocados took a little bit of tip burn in this last freeze, but they will recover. This is the cold hardy guava that we found up on the Brooksville Ridge that's coming back. This is a really excited one. This is a Suriname cherry. It's covered in flowers right now. This is a black raft, grafted variety. So this is called the Zills Black. It's a little bit better than the regular red Suriname cherry. As you can see, we have a full carpet of that mimosa. It's really filled in nice here on this side of the swale. This being the downward side of the swale. So that swale is basically a perfectly line, a level line in the land. You know, we dig out that swale, we put that dirt on that bottom side. So as the water comes down, it goes into the swale, really feeds those trees on that bottom side of that swale. So as we step down, you know, we have more things like native firebush. This is gonna bring in hummingbirds, butterflies. Four days ago here, we had 26 degrees. I mean, you could see these bananas have some burnt tips on it, but just 10 feet from the banana, we have a Kent mango. No tip burn whatsoever. You know, so, you know, folks, plants don't read the books. You know, yeah. some of these things are not supposed to be growing here. They wanna grow here. Give them a chance, give them a try. I mean, we lose a tree, it's no big deal. This is, we're experimenting. 10 feet from the banana, I thought you were gonna talk about this. <laughs> I don't know how he floated in here, but... Is that uh, your signature? You I don't know where he came from. I'm pretty sure that's one of the homeowner's favorites. But this is another one of those patches of mimosa, folks. This is a, a, this is a, a lawn alternative here in Florida. We don't uh -huh. have to grow grass. Grass isn't native. This wants to grow here. This is native. We find pineapples do really well in this understory setting also. And just like when we were at my place, you know, we grow the passion fruits up the trees. So we just started about 10 passion fruits here. And this is what they look like at a very young stage. In eight months, this passion fruit will be up either one of these trees, completely engulfing the tree. And then when the fruit's ready, it'll fall off the tree when it's ripe. How much maintenance are you leaving for the homeowners? So I have to be honest with you, I was a little skeptical about how much maintenance would be here, the way we removed all these invasive species, yeah. you know, but I feel that we did a really good job getting those roots. You know, when you take the time and you prep the site properly yeah. and you get this stuff out from the roots, it's not as much of a problem. We've been here, like I said, so, every, everything from here over is six months old. I think they have no more than 10 hours in the last six months so of pulling weeds. So once a year coming in and putting down more mulch coming in, putting down more mulch, doing chop and drop. The idea is to kind of grow your mulch, you know. I'd really yeah. like to mulch it one, hard, one time hard, and then we're growing the mulch in the future, you know. I look at the plants as the weeds. You plant, you, you plant the plants you want or you get the weeds you don't want. Multiple species for biomass, multiple species for mulch, multiple species for nitrogen fixation. That's what it's about. It's about this perennial polyculture. It's about having multi-species. You know, we only have a couple of the same type of fruit trees. We have maybe 30 different fruit trees on this site. Looking here on this swale, I mean, we have a mulberry, we have a loquat, we have a peach, we have an olive going down in the next swale. We have a catley guava, a fig, another peach. We have a fioja, which is a pineapple guava. Another black Suriname cherry. As I'm kind of working my way down the swales here too. I'm so for every dollar they put into a permaculture design like this, how much do you think that adds in property value? I would say a lot. I mean, I look at the regular standard landscape of grass and plants that you can't eat as a car. I mean, yeah. it's going to depreciate. It's going to lose value. When we're installing a system like this, this is like this is like investing in a 401k, an IRA. It's going to do nothing. Become more and more and more abundant. You know, before you know it, these people will be sharing with their neighbors. Before you yeah. know it, they'll be selling to somebody down the road. So, you know, not only is it going to be very aesthetically pleasing, yeah. gorgeous, bringing in beneficial insects, but it's going to be very bountiful. I mean, and if they were to list it, it would be more valuable than what. That, that it would have been before you did this. Oh, this is pretty so much like is, a, go ahead. a private botanical garden, you know, to be able to come out in your backyard and walk around out here like this. Yeah. I think a lot of people probably dream of having a site like this in their backyard. So you think maybe 10% on the dollar? At least. Over the long run, 25%, At least. so. At least, maybe 25%. Nice. In the long term, I'd give it five years when yeah, we're in full yeah, production. Yeah, this is an investment, this isn't like, Right away, but let's get it to full production, and you've increased property value as much as 25%. Would you say that'd be fair? At least on this on this on, one on acre lot, this size, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So, you know, we've basically thinned out all the invasive species, yeah. and over here on this forest, we've planted the species we've wanted. Again, before and after. I'm with the landowners here, and I'm just curious. I just want to know what made you do this in the first place. Like, why just go from what's normal 
to this. Um, last August, I saw a Facebook posting for a farm tour, and I went over to Peter's house, and I was there five seconds, <laughs> and that was it. I know, right? My husband was out of town. I said, when you come home, I'm going to take you somewhere and show you what we can do. And we went over there, and the same thing happened to him. We came home. We looked at our canopy. Not as spectacular as Peter's, yeah. but pretty good. And he lives close by, and we said... Go for it. We I had know, no right? idea we could have this much. We were thinking of maybe getting a motor home at some time and yeah. we just decided instead <laughs> of doing that, home. you know, we'll just let them, you know, it's still in progress. We're doing it kind of yeah. in phases, but anyway. Well, good for you guys. This is an investment. The motor home would have yeah. depreciated. Yeah. Well, before you, you could not walk five yeah. steps without tripping over a vine yeah. and getting stuck by something. So when it opened up and we saw the beautiful trees and different times of the day, yeah. morning or afternoon when the light shines through we call it our so pretty garden <laughs> good for you guys so, I'm so pretty happy for we, you. i don't know how many times we've said so pretty <laughs> yeah. congratulations Thank you. Anyway, we're really we love happy. it we're very happy yeah. now wait a minute who decided to get the wheelbarrow duty uh, he's on the tractor and you're on the wheelbarrow yeah i just jumped on it <laughs> a little bit more old-fashioned man more you got the liking. short end of the stick no, or the no. long end? You get some I got, exercise. I got the long end. Exactly. You don't have to breathe that fuel. No breathing any fuel. No, no, no trip to the gym needed later. So. No loud noises. Oh, I'm good to go. Mr. Ian, we'll be back in a little bit to get the trailer. Here's a couple of those micro emitters for those two that we're missing over there on that far side. Let's make sure we run the zones after we install those. Thank you, sir. Pete and I are back. He's a busy guy on the phone. I got Off three jobs going. Okay, buddy. Yeah. See ya. Get Thanks. Done. Thank you. Thanks for showing me your work you, this bro. morning. Thanks for coming. Okay. We got the kiddos out. What are you guys awesome. doing? Riding bikes. Look what he gave us for breakfast this morning. A fresh papaya. papaya. Have you guys eaten breakfast yet? Okay, we're going to work on that. Princess Mer Mermaid escorting her lizard. <laughs> Here, you need a little help? Oh, you got it. Big girl, five years old, riding a bike on this rocky terrain here. I'll give you a little boost. There you go, girl. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Brown. Hey. Look what we got for breakfast. Woo! Papaya. 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 Can you say papaya? Papaya. Oh, you're cute as a button, buddy. He peed on the toilet. Mom, he peed on the toilet and he pooped on the toilet last night. Yeah, he, he said he pooped a little bit today. I don't know. Did you have to ask him or? No, he wanted to. Yeah. No, so, no. Last night, I said, where's Mr. Brown? We were all in the bus. And I heard, in here. And he had gone into the bathroom, shut the door, and he was doing his business. Yeah. Give me a kiss. Mm. You want to give the people a kiss? Yeah. Give him a kiss. Give the camera a kiss. Oh yes, you get the people kiss. We are looking forward to tomorrow. We're heading up to Full Circle Farm. Mm -hmm. That was not our original plan. No. But that dairy and that meat was so good. We're almost out, aren't we? Yeah, we are. So we're like, we gotta hit we it need up. We to go back. And we're gonna stay there several days. Yeah. Shoot some special videos. Maybe take some rest. I don't know, find take some rest there. a little bit of rest, yeah. Yeah. So we look forward to hanging out with them again. Mm -hmm. 